So what I did was every single funeral, I would sit there and stare at the cops for one minute to make sure that I am not scared of the cops anymore. Every single time what goes through my head, right, when I see these cops, I'm like, man, what if the eyes open? Uh, hi, my name is Kelly. I am 26 years old this year. I'm an undertaker in my company's, uh, my family's business, I would say. We have been around for 70 over years. I started working for my family's business six months ago. Uh, the reason why I started was because I was doing really well in other jobs that I had. I was doing really well in the corporate world. Um, it's not like I didn't hit my KPIs. You know, my bosses loved me. I had a great experience. I worked really well with my colleagues. But I felt like something was missing. I felt like something was empty. And the question of whether I was going to take over my family's business has been ongoing for the past five to six years. So my friend's dad passed away about three weeks ago. When he, when he told me about it, uh, when, so he actually called me and said that, you know, my dad is actually not in a very good state. Um, can I come by to your office? I, I, I really want to, uh, I just want to take a look at the packages and see what it's like, the rough costing and everything. One thing that he told me as well, which I was very, very touched because uh, he said that I'm actually not going to look for anyone else. I'm just going to trust you and let you handle this. And I was pretty touched because we're not close. Every single night, I would go there personally. Even though I know it's really perfectly run and I can trust my workers that are there to do a good job. But I want to go there physically every single night to make sure, to let him know that I'm here. This requires you to be on the ball 24-7. You know, we are a 24-7 funeral service company and it requires us to always be ready. And sometimes because of that, I cannot make plans ahead of time. Definitely funerals are for the living. They are for the families of the deceased. You know, they are mourning the passing of their loved ones. Uh, it is the final and last journey. It's the sending off. So you are doing it for them so that they are able to have a peace of mind. Nobody wants to know that their loved ones passed on unwillingly or in a non-peaceful way. So this industry has been around for a very long time. My workers are actually, they are around their mid-50s to early 60s. A lot of them are not very educated. You know, back then in the days, a lot of people uh, kind of fought to have an education. So, they know what they're doing though. They just cannot explain it to you very well. For example, if you ask them, uh, why is this coffin better than this one? They'll just say, oh, it's just better. You know, they're not able to elaborate on the reasons why and help you understand from their perspective. You know, when I tell people that I'm in industry, some people are taken aback, whoa, I have good like, reactions. Whoa, wow, that's a good thing. You know, it's a good service. They help people, then they are the ones that are very, very um, superstitious, maybe. I wasn't dating that person, but the mom wasn't a fan of what I did. And she was like, wow, you better don't date this kind of girl, them pantang ones, yeah. You never know whether like, in your sleep you'll wake up or not. I'm not a murderer, eh. Oh my god, I am like, I am a funeral undertaker that helps to put dead people at ease, right? But if you want me to cremate you, I mean, sure. I want to say that I'm not sensitive. I'm still sensitive because I feel empathy. I feel empathy, I feel compassion towards the family members of the deceased. Yeah. I have to be able to differentiate between emotional and being professional. My funeral would definitely be something very uh, simple. I would, want to, I would want to look pretty on my deathbed. I want to look fly. I look fly when I'm alive. I look fly when I'm dead. So I want my friends to like, offer me my favorite food. That would be a test to see whether you know what I loved you when I was living or not. Right? Like if you give me some crap like rojak, like dude, I never even ate rojak in my life eh. You're gonna serve me rojak when I'm dead now, I will haunt you, you know. I think the more you think about death, the more you don't live your life to the fullest. The more you think about how life is great, the more you're going to enjoy life. Most importantly is being patient and being empathetic. But over here it's more of the service, how you want to make them feel. It's not the colour of the coffin itself, it's not how nicely you make the funeral, it's how you make them feel, you know. Being appreciative, Helps you to love life a bit more. Yeah, just being thankful for being alive, right? Life is great. Life is lit. <laughs>